woot woot and I'm back. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Lori Marie, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. I've been off my table for three weeks. Three amazing weeks. I got to spend one week with um, students in Melbourne, Australia, and then two weeks traveling around Australia with um, Handsome Hubby. We had an amazing time. But I've missed you terribly and I have missed my table terribly. But I am home now and we are ready to play. A couple of things I want to talk to you about. Uh, we have topped 14,000 subscribers. Yay us! Yay! So I am giving away um, some sheets of focal points to three lucky winners. Did I say three in the, in the video? I don't know. Hmm. We're sticking with three. Three lucky people, because they're the same focal points that um, the Patreon members are going to get. So they will also get an image of the piece and step-by-step -step instructions. But our three winners will get um, some focal points as well that you will see in our project for today. Very, very fun. Another thing is I will do our live chats on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Uh, Vallejo, California time, so that more people around the world can see it. 10 o'clock in the morning is too early for some people, uh, some countries. So we're going to be doing it at 2 o'clock. Um, let's see, anything else that I needed to touch base on? Thank you everyone for all of your support while I was gone. Thank you Brandy for um, taking care of the village in my absence. You did a great job. So I do have some thank yous that I want to shout out. Uh, I'm going to get those pieces. Hang on. Woot woot and I'm back. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is Lori Marie, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. I've been off my table for three weeks. Three amazing weeks. I got to spend one week with um, students in Melbourne. Australia and then two weeks traveling around Australia with um, Handsome Hubby. We had an amazing time. But I've missed you terribly and I have missed my table terribly. But I am home now and we are ready to play. A couple of things I want to talk to you about. Uh, we have topped 14,000 subscribers. Yay us! Yay! So I am giving away um, some sheets of focal points to three lucky winners. Did I say three in the, in the video? I don't know. Hmm. We're sticking with three. Three lucky people because they're the same focal points that um, the Patreon members are going to get. So they will also get an image of the piece and step-by-step -step instructions. But our three winners will get um, some focal points as well that you will see in our project for today. Very, very fun. Another thing is I will do our live chats on Wednesday at 2 o'clock uh, Vallejo, California time so that more people around the world can see it. 10 o'clock in the morning is too early for some people, uh, some countries. So we're going to be doing it at 2 o'clock. Um, let's see, anything else that I needed to touch base on? Thank you everyone for all of your support while I was gone. Thank you Brandy for um, taking care of the village in my absence. You did a great job. So I do have some thank yous that I want to shout out. Uh, I'm going to get those pieces. Hang on. Alright, so Cynthia sent me some paper dolls and some dresses which is very, very fun, and a lovely Halloween card. Uh, Yvonne, of course, you know what you sent. Thank you so much. And some gorgeous feathers. Do you have birds? Because these feathers are beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? This is, and I won't take you through the whole thing, but it is amazing. This is a book that uh, Rosemary made for me for my travels. I got to meet her for a cuppa in, while I was in Australia. So a nice little holder and a book for me to play in. 
So that's a big thank you. And thank you for joining me for a cuppa. This book, do I have it upside down or right side up? Okay, this book was made for me by my students in Australia. And it is absolutely amazing. So to all of you that put your time and energy into creating this fun book for me, thank you so much. All right, a little chatty, but I haven't been here for a little while. So understandable on my part. Missed you guys. Um, see you on the table. Okay, villagers. It's a little bit big. I'll turn it this way for a moment. Then I'm going to turn it the other way. Here's your project for today. I made it on a wooden substrate with some underpants and some citrus salve and some acrylic, a couple of different colors of acrylic. Actually, I have uh, blue and ochre and then some white splotches that I just splattered on. And then all of these uh, images are from uh, two different magazines, a fashion magazine and um, an art magazine. So this was very, very fun to create. Um, I constructed it on construction paper first before I put her on the substrate. Finished it off with Stabilo and some white dots. Um, anything else? Oh, I put some stays on rubber stamps in the background. And I think I've covered everything that we used. So underpants, citrus salve, acrylic turquoise, acrylic ochre, acrylic white, rubber stamp, um, constructed this on construction paper, took sandpaper to this to scuff it up a little bit, stabilo, white dots, ta-da, ta-da. Oh, it's so good to be back on the table. <laughs> you have no idea. Good morning. It's dark o'clock. We're back from Australia and I am so ready to play on the table. So here are some of the supplies that we're going to start off with this morning. I've got a couple of acrylics. My X-Acto. These are citrus solve pages. If you don't have citrus solve pages, it's okay. Use something fun. That's going to be for the underpants. I have lots of fun underpants to play with. A makeup sponge, a stencil, and I'm not going to use her. And some fun things that I have cut out or torn out of a couple of magazines this morning. So I will be fussy cutting those out. Let's find the face we're going to use. This is inspired by Andrea Deming. She's magnificent at this. I am not, but I enjoy playing with the faces and the, and the hats and the techniques. So these are just some of the images that I've torn out. We'll use some of them. This is the face that I'm going to play with this morning. So what I'm going to do first is put some underpants on this substrate, which happens to be a board because that's what I have. So I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to uh, put some underpants on my board. You all know how to do this. Grab my baby blue. And some underpants. And I'm just going to start putting the underpants down. I'm going to leave enough over the edge so that I can wrap it. And you can use a canvas board. You can use... watercolor paper, whatever you would like to play with. I happen to have a board, 
so I'm going to use it. So just go through and put your underpants down in the shadows of dark o'clock in the morning. Okay, my board is kind of big to get on the whole screen. Pretty close. Pretty close. All right, I have my underpants almost all down. And I have a few of you ask me why I call them underpants. We've gone through this, but let's talk about it again. When I first started teaching, I always had this layer of text down first, the under layer, and I would try to explain why it was important to have the under layer. It gives us a chance to settle on the table, gives us a chance to bond with our substrate. It's a very important layer in my world because it starts the energy on the piece. Not all of it is seen, so I used to say it's very important, but not everyone gets to see all of them. So the word underpants just started coming out of my mouth. And my students know that usually we start a piece, <coughs> pardon me, with underpants. So that's where the term underpants came from. It's not meant to offend anyone, certainly. Uh, it's just a, a way of starting off with the with your art piece. Now I'm going to bring in some of the Citrus Solve pages just for some color and some texture. Like I say, if you don't have Citrus Solve pages, then uh, just use some fun papers. That's really a thick one there. The Citrus Elf pages are really fun to create if you can. I know Citrus Elf isn't available all over the world. Some of you have found a substitute that works. I will leave a link under this video to the Citrus Elf pages on how to create them with the product that I know to use, which is Citrus Solve, which is an all-natural citrus cleaner, degreaser. Alright, just going to put some of those down and then I'm going to flip it over when it's dry enough. Ha ha, like I can wait. I'll let this dry for a minute and then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to flip the pages, wrap this like a little Christmas present along the edge, along all edges. I'll do this and then we will come back and play some more. Everybody's tucked around nicely. You know I didn't wait for the other side to dry. So we will see how much texture we've created when we lift this up. A little bit of texture, not very much. Okie dokie. So I know that my image is going to be this way. So of course my print, my text is all going in that direction, reading across this way. Not very good at uh, putting my underpants on crooked. So 
There we have it. I'm going to grab a credit card. Actually, I believe this is the key from Novotel, the hotel that I stayed at while I was in St. Kilda. Pardon me. <laughs> and I am just going to drag that paint down. Get some background color going on. Love it already. Hit the edges if you want. Not necessary. Artist choice there. I have some paint on the card, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. dry and then we'll come back with our stencil. This is the stencil I'm going to be using today. My stencils are still in a suitcase over at Patricia's house. So we're going to use this one. I'm going to put some ochre paint on my work surface, my ever clean work surface. My hands are always nice and decorated already this morning and my makeup sponge. I'm going to get the makeup sponge wet and I'm just going to use pieces of the stencil. I'm not going to use the whole stencil all at once. I'm just going to use bits and pieces of it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the ochre paint. don't want too much. So I'm creating more noise in the background than I am to actually make a, a shape with the stencil. Lovely. I'm going to dry this and then move on. I don't want to disturb this, so I'm going to dry this and then move on. So this is pretty much dry to the touch. I'm just going to bring my stencil back in. A little bit of ochre paint on there. And just go back in and add some more fun. Funness. We'll make that a word. dry this and add more. And dry and just keep going back over your piece with the stencil and acrylic color of your choice until you are satisfied with the background so I'm just going to add a little bit more dry see where we stand and then add more possibly like some nice noise back here 
Have some fun background going on. All right, this is amazing. I have some ochre paint left over, over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna squeeze my tube, get the air out of my tube, and then go back in here and suck that extra paint up. I don't wanna waste a single bit of that. So I go in here and I just suck it up. You can't see me because I'm off screen, but you just squeeze this, put it in the paint, and it sucks it like back up. Just like that. Makes that noise and everything. I know there's a glare there. That's what happens when we're playing in the dark. All right, so I've decided I'd like a little bit more noise in this background. So I've grabbed a rubber stamp, a couple of rubber stamps actually, and I'm just going to add some noise to the background here. Although it's beautiful. I'm just going to add a little bit more noise here. And this, uh, this rubber stamp is just that. It does not have words or anything like that. But artist choice, use whatever stamp you want, of course. And I'm using Stazon uh, Permanent Ink because that's what I enjoy. So just adding some more noise. Now what do we need? Oh, now what do we need? We need some splatters of some white now. That'll be fun, huh? Just listening to the piece, seeing what it thinks would be a good idea next. All right. That sounds pretty noisy, huh? Some white acrylic. Let's see if I can get a little bit more on screen. Just going to put some white acrylic on my workspace. And my workspace is getting smaller and smaller. Hudson must have missed me because he is up on the table with me today. All right, I'm going to take my baby blue and some water, and I'm just going to dilute that down a bit. And then I'm just going to tap my brush. Get some white splatters all over. All right, we're gonna call that a good, <laughs> yeah, I'm splattering it everywhere. <laughs> Watch out, Hudson, you are in danger. Okay. I'm gonna turn this around and splatter some more in the other direction. Hilarious. Ah, small workspace. I know you guys know what I mean. Too much fun. All right. <laughs> Okie dokie. A little snort there even for you. I have paint everywhere. Eh, okay, this is good for the background. Let's move on. All right, I'm going to go back and revisit these images that I found attractive in my first go around through a fashion magazine and then art magazine. 
and I'm going to go through and decide what I want to save, what I will use, and what I don't want to use. But I won't know until I cut them out and play with them. All kinds of fun images. So I grab my cutting mat and my X-Acto and I'm going to start fussy cutting these things out and I'll bring you back when I've got them cut out. I am going to use a, um, a glue stick because I don't want any more wrinkling to happen in these magazine pages and we know that the Mod Podge will wrinkle them. Sometimes that's okay. And this glue stick, the UHU stick, works very, very well. So we are going to stay with that. And we're going to build her on the construction paper. So I know that that's going to go there. 
And I just am going to put that glue right on her chin to hold her in place. But I want to be able to move the head around, lift the head up in case I need to tuck something underneath. So, all right. Oh, getting serious here. Well, I know these are going to go on her little face. That was just fun. So fun. Have to do that. Beautiful. And we know that this is going to go here. I love that. So we will put that there. I don't know how much of this you want to watch. So this is still loose, so I can still build behind that. Really like this. This goes out a little bit too far. So I'm just going to cut the edges off there. I'm going to go right to the top with that. I know I can go that far. And I know that this is the base piece, so I can go ahead and stick that on the construction paper. So it's like putting a little puzzle together. These are the high heels. Not fun. That little growl was Mr. Hudson dreaming. <laughs> little sweetheart. Alright, now I'm just going to start popping things underneath. Just going to start gluing them down. Okay, ready? Let's do it. Okay, this is where her hand was. Her hand was under her chin. So I don't like that. So I'm going to put a flower there and this green strip of leather is going to become the stem of that flower. Put that right under her lip. That's good.
Now this butterfly uh, is missing part of his wing, and that is not okay with me. So we are going to patch his wing. Let him have one. This has to go someplace that's so delicious. I don't know where. We'll find a spot for that. I think we found a spot for it. So we're still loose there, okay? Ooh, that's fun. Can we do that with a half circle? And not waste a full circle? I think we can. This is the top of that champagne cork. Very fun. All right, well, no one to hold them, when to, no one to fold them. I think we're just about at fold up time here on her. So let's look around, see if there's anything else that's talking to us. This, don't think so, a oh, feather. Well, if we put a feather there, we're going to hear that it's out of balance. So let's put a feather here. Now we've just pulled it out of balance. So let's see what else we have here. We're going to call that good. So now I'm going to glue the face and the original part of the headdress down. Ears are glued down. She is pretty amazing. All right, I'm going to let the glue dry, which it will, and then I'm going to cut her out and get her ready for her substrate. She is very cool. All right, sweetheart, you go ahead and dry. We'll be back. I am going to use my X-Acto 
to cut her out. Uh, do yourself a big favor and make sure that your exacto uh, blade is new and sharp. It will make all the difference in your world. Also, when you are cutting out with your exacto, turn the paper and not necessarily your knife. You'll get a cleaner edge if you're always working from the same side. And I would rather see you cut a little bit too close into the image than to have too much of the border paper or the construction paper underneath to have that show. I would rather you come in to the image a little bit. And just go around your whole image. I have my cutting board underneath. Just go for it. Don't tear anything. Always go in with your blade and make sure that it's clean. All right, see you in a minute. So I haven't gone any place. I'm still here cutting out her headdress. Almost there. Okay, she is all cut out. Let's bring our substrate back and peek at that. Ooh, pretty amazing. So what I want to do is uh, scuff, uh, scuff some of the substrate up with some sandpaper, of course. And where I'd like to scuff it up is pretty much just around her leaving the rest of it pretty intense. So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to draw around her with a pen. Let's see if that draws. Yes. So I've marked on here with a pen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back this piece, set that aside for just a moment, and I am going to put Mod Podge all over this side of it. Make sure that everything is stuck down well. Nice coat of Mod Podge. This will catch any of the edges that are still sticking up. And we'll set her aside to dry. Bring the substrate back in. Find the approximate line where I drew. All right, we have that scuffed up pretty well. Let's see how it looks with our focal point on there, okay? Let's bring her back in. She's still a little damp from the Mod Podge. Well, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more over there.
That is very, very good. All right. All right, I'm going to wait until this Mod Podge dries. Then I'm going to flip it over, put Mod Podge on the other side, and stick her down. Make sure all the sanding dust is off your piece. Bring in your focal point. Put Mod Podge on the back of that. And let's put her down in a good way. We don't want to put her down in a bad way. We want to tell her she's gorgeous. There's some freezer paper here. I'll lay that down on top of her. Really massage that down. Okay, so she's all glued down and gorgeous. So what I can say about my artwork is many, many times it is not centered uh, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some energy uh, along this right side. I have the piece too far to the left, which is uh, quite normal for me actually, is to have it to one side more than the other. So I'm going to glue these down. Uh, with some Mod Podge. I'll use Mod Podge since I'm working on the um, the wood. And then... Yeah, let's start there. Alright, so I have the circle here and the inner circles here. I'm going to take the butterfly, put the butterfly on the top of that last peak there. going to let this dry and then I'm going to have a blast with Stabilo. That's right gang. I haven't had my fingers on Stabilo in a little while and I'm so looking forward to it. I'm going to start around the edges. with the Stabilo. Oh, tummy's growling. Back on the table. All right, go around your edges with your stabilo. And we'll come back. And now you're going to go around your focal point and your circles with your stabilo. Just go for it. Now if you haven't played with the Stabilo before, there are many ways to do it. I'm a spit and smudge girl, but you can always use a little sponge. Get your finger wet on the sponge. You can use a, a makeup sponge. You can use a Q-tip. 
You can use, what else, Q-tip, makeup sponge, a little sponge with moisture on it. Oh, and a small paintbrush. So there's many things that you can do to get the Stabilo to smudge around. I, however, am a spitting smudge kind of girl. This might be when I lose some of you. <laughs> Just keep going around until all of your focal point is done. Then we'll come back and chat. I'm going to take my Stabilo and I'm going to go around the edges of her headdress. So I'm just continuing to low light around all of the um, parts of her headdress. And what I want to say to you is if you use a magazine image like I did, they are more fragile and you may lose some of the color. Uh, if you are uh, using something that is a laser print, it does hold up better. So I will be sending these images to my Patreon uh, members so that they can print them out uh, on their home laser printer or a professional laser printer. And then also we have something to celebrate that happened while I was in Australia. We hit 14,000 and we're halfway to 15,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So I will be sending out PDFs of these uh, focal points, her headdress focal point. So what all you have to do is just leave a comment. You don't have to, there's no secret word, there's no game to play this time. Uh, you're jet lagged. Lori Marie is just going to give away some uh, focal points in a PDF form. Okay? So, leave a comment. You and if you are a Patreon user, supporter, you will get these focal points. And if you are one of the winners, you will get these focal points. So that's kind of fun. All right, I have all the Stabilo on her. I'm just going to go around some of her with the white dots. This is always artist's choice, whether you want the white dots or not. I love them. Okay, today is Monday, November 12th. Uh, I hope to have this video edited and published by tonight. So you guys will probably see it on Tuesday. So we will pick our winner on Thursday. Oh, I know what we'll do. We'll pick the winner on our live chat on Wednesday. I am going to change the time of our live chat to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Vallejo, California time, and that way more people around the world can participate in the live chat. Okay? So, yes, we will pick our winner. I will announce, pick our winner and announce our winner on our chat on Wednesday at 2 o'clock Vallejo, California time which means I will be picking the winner prior to that. So that will be fun. Alright, I am just dotting it up here. Just having fun. She is gorgeous. And so fun to do. <laughs> I 
You'd never know she started out the way she started out, would you? She's great. I love her. All right, your turn. Go create, go play, and yes, go have fun.